You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? John Garmer and Paul Deezer. King of Spot. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hello and welcome to another Wrestling the Max Extra, breaking down that G1 Climax 25, night 13. Yes, we're at 13 nights. We are on the final stop of the tour before they get to Tokyo for six straight sold-out nights. Three nights in Currican Hall, three nights at Sumo Hall, and then we're done. So we've got Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday... Or once we get to those Kurik and Hall shows, we're going to start seeing some people. Show Tanaka's going to come back to wrestling uh, after being in Noah. Uh, and then the, the Sumo Hall shows are going to see the Kingdom come back. We're going to see the Young Bucks. We're going to see Red Dragon come back. Uh, so that's going to be some fun stuff to the undercard, for sure. Um, and, of course, that those last two... Uh, the two nights in uh, Sumo Hall before we get to... Kurikan, I think those are no longer G1 Climax shows. Those are just like preliminary shows. And then we get to that final on that Sunday night, which again, we will have a full review for you here with uh, my two co-hosts, Mr. Paul Leeser and Gary Vaughn. We'll, we'll be doing what we normally do, that which you know shows off our normal podcast uh chops which you know we did those we did a new one on thursday night episode 155 talking about uh those you know divas tag team titles being a possibility uh more stuff with uh you know the roh and new japan stuff going on uh reviewing all the shows raw nxt tna roh and that ultima lucha and then previewing triple mania as well which we'll be reviewing next week on the podcast uh, I might be doing a written review for that as well on for Last Word on Sports, just like I'm doing for all the New Japan G1 Climax shows, and you can read them on there. Last Word on Sports, find hit the Sports tab, go to Last uh, LWS Extra, you'll see Pro Wrestling, hit the Pro Wrestling tab, and you'll see all of those there. You'll have to scroll through a few other you know other people's articles and stuff, but they'll be there. You'll see them. So that being said. If you've enjoyed these things, make sure you subscribe to the show. Uh, that always helps. Write and review as well as iTunes and Stitcher. Whether you like the other shows or you just like these G1 shows, we do preview and review every big New Japan event that happens. Um, now, the minor like house shows, I might actually do those as an extra, like I've been doing these, and I'll review those. I might start also doing some other Japanese uh, promotion stuff with, you know, there's a, there's plenty of people that, you know, put up the, the whole shows online of different other Japanese promotions, and I might start doing those as extras. 
Um, so you'll you'll get a whole view into Japan, I guess, pretty soon here. Uh, but I mean, it, even if you don't like our regular show and you just care about the Puro stuff, you should still subscribe because it helps that part get seen, and then you know the whole podcast gets gets seen by everyone and it grows. So. You want it to grow, and the other way you can help grow it is following us on Twitter at Wrestling Two Max, and you can also go on Facebook, search Wrestling to the Max. There's a Facebook group you can join. Hit that join button. I will add you in, and there you go. You're in, and you can talk to all the other people that are either fans of the podcast or just fans of wrestling in general, and you can talk to them about whatever's going on. So, all right, enough of the formalities. I think we should get to this show, which is really a one-match show with another very good match from AJ and Tenzon, surprisingly. I think a lot of people would probably be surprised about that. But um, aside from that one, you know, we have the rest of the card and some tag matches that were actually pretty good here. So I think uh, you should definitely make sure that you check out I think that the tag match is actually, you know, they weren't anything like just spectacular, but three of them were just pretty fun to watch, you know. So I would say that it wouldn't be too bad to go check them out, um, especially because, you know, there isn't a whole lot to speak of on the rest of the card because it is what it is with uh, some of these match types. You know, not everybody's going to gel and work and, and everything, so that that's pretty much like the gist of that. But uh, I'll also be previewing the next night, you know, and we'll we'll get into that as well. Which they have one more, like I said on Sunday, the first Kirk and Hall show, and then we'll, they'll take a break on Monday. So let's let's get into this from Naku Nakaku, Yokohama, Japan, inside the Yokohama Bunka Gymnasium. I wish this really did look like a gymnasium, like the ones you'd see on a stage at your local high school or something. It had the, you know, the wood on the bottom. Uh, the entrance actually had to be from the side because there was this contraption in the center that would prevent them from, uh, you know, working. I think uh, either way, it, it was kind of funny to see. Uh, there was no commentary. Uh, the, the It was kind of darkened in the gymnasium as well, during the entrances, and for most of the show, really. So, eight-man tag, Ryusuke Taguchi, Yohei Komatsu, Jushin Thunder Liger, who's now, I guess, permanently replaced Tiger Mask on this tour, and I'm not going to complain, because much better than Tiger Mask. Satoshi Kojima, your CMML, or not MM. Why do I always say MM? It's LL. The, so, against... The CMLL World World Series Champion Masakada David Finley Jr. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Kushida and Yuji Nagata. It's Kojima and Nagata. The next night on Sunday, having a deal with each other. So this is kind of what the gist of this tag match was. It was a fun opener. Uh, hit seeing Dorada hit a suicide dive to start your off your Sunday morning. I'm not or not Sunday. Your Saturday morning. I'm not going to complain at all. Uh, he took out Liger. And then, you know, Kushida and Dorado would later combine for something we haven't seen from Kushida in a while, which is like him doing the, it's literally him bending time as he goes back and forth on the ropes for a while and then hitting a big drop kick to Yohei Komatsu's face. Um, it was pretty cool to see, um, if you haven't seen it. It's 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 funny because it goes with this time splitter thing, whatever. Again, the, the whole thing here was for Nagata and Kojima to kind of have some interactions to get you into that match. And you see that here when Nagata... Blocking the top rope elbow after he hits the machine gun chops and then the elbow in the corner. Uh, he tries to go for the exploder, but Kojima blocks that with a cutter. Uh, Kojima hits a, has his lariat countered into the white eyes on bar, but then everybody comes in at once and tries to break it up. Uh, this is when you see Liger hit a palm strike, I think, on Kamatsu, or it might be on Dorada, don't know. Then Taguchi hits an ass attack, and... It's Taguchi that stays in with David Finley. Uh, David, they kind of go off of their singles match, except for instead of going for a uh, the ankle lock, fin, uh, he goes for the Dodon. Finley counters with a roll up, gets two Dodon again, and then he pins David Finley, and 
Taguchi, Yohei, Komatsu, Jushin Liger, and Satoshi Kojima win. Like I said, it was pretty enjoyable. It's not anything, you know, it, it's also not something that's going to, like, totally destroy your day if you don't watch, but it also is, is whatever. It's a nice little thing to get you get you started. But then there was a tag match right after this, which was much better, especially, you know, if you don't care for Michael Elgin, Elgin again, I have to say, this is one of those things that just, it works, because it's two guys that, you know, speak English, and they can really get into each other, it's not, you know, your typical thing here, so, Jay White and Michael Elgin against Cody Hall and Carl Anderson, all gaijins, uh, of course, Cody Hall and Carl Anderson of the Bullet Club, your IWGP Tag Champion, Carl Anderson, uh, Michael Elgin and Carl Anderson really make you want to make you watch their match that they're going to have uh, tomorrow. It's going to be really fun. Every time Elgin would pick him up for something, Anderson would freak out. And it's just awesome. You see them do the stalling suplex. Anderson's cursing at him while he's while he continues to do this. Um, and the crowd was big time into Elgin because he was pretty much the only guy, you know, big time guy here that you're going to cheer for. Um, Hall couldn't stop him from doing the stalling suplex, so he just kind of just keeps doing it, and then he brings him down. Uh, you see Cody Hall kind of do a roll through off a Jay White draw kick or an elbow or something, trying to do the rib breaker. He puts him on his shoulders, but then uh, Jay gets out of it. Uh, Elgin would later do a deadlift German on Anderson, which had Anderson freaking out the whole way down, which was funny. Anderson would put, or Elgin would put Anderson in a clover leaf. And then you see Cody Hall come in and try to break it up, and Elgin takes a shot from him and is like, come on! And this is something he did with Anderson, too, where Anderson would hit him, and he'd be like, come on! And he'd flex or whatever, and the the crowd would just love it. So the second time he does it, uh, he spits at him. You can see the spit flying, too. And he's like, you ain't shit. And... Just the crowd goes nuts for him. I mean, they don't understand what he said, but they, they love the fact that he spit on him and was just like, defiant. No, you are not kicking me off this guy. Uh, of course, pretty much you know how this is going to end when there's a young lion in here. Uh, Tikio Gunstun, Jay White kicks out of it. A regular Gunstun does him in. Great chemistry between Air, um, Anderson and Elgin. And I'm excited for their match. It's going to kick off the G1 matches. Uh, tomorrow in Kurikan Hall. So that'll be fun to see how, how Tokyo is going to respond to Mr. Elgin. So the third match is your six-man tag. Captain New Japan, IWGP Intercontinental Champion, Hiroki Goto, and Tomoki Hama against Yoshihashi, Tomohiro Ishii, and Shinsuke Nakamura. It's Nakamura and Hanma as your part of your double main event, and Hiroki Goto against Ishii as part of the other part of the main event. Um, so, you know, you can't really go wrong there, I think. Uh, those are going to be two killer matchups. One that's going to be two guys trying to beat the crap out of each other. And another one that Hama and Nakamura have had a lot of, you know, interactions through these tag matches. So, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. And I, and I really want to, you know, see if they have a good match, you know. Because some of these shows, Hama hasn't been so over as he has been lately. But I think with Nakamura, we're safe to say it's going to be good. So uh, we have the the pair-offs, of course. Uh, it starts off with Hama missing a Kokeshi. And then Nakamura doing a making fun of Hama's Kokeshi and doing a Kokeshi knee drop instead. Um, uh, pretty much insulting Hanma there. Goto and Ishii have a small exchange where they beat each other down. Ishii tries to avoid the back suplex, but Goto gets it anyway. Uh, then Hanma and Nakamura go at it again. Hanma makes uh, Nakamura miss the vibration knees in the corner. Uh, Hanma gets a comeback, but he misses the Kokeshi again. Then Hanma will get a rocky Kokeshi and get the regular Kokeshi. Uh, Hanma will get a deadlift on Yoshihashi. Then CNJ and Yoshihashi were left alone. You know what's going to happen here. Captain New Japan counters the attempt at a swanton the first time. He can't do it the second time. Loose explosion for the win. And Chaos wins this one. Not much of anything. Uh, you know, there's some fun stuff in there with Hama and Nakamura, but not something you really need to 
go out of your way to see. The, if you're going to watch one tag match, the, the Jay White and Elgin against Anderson and Cody Hall was the one you needed to watch. And this last tag match, honestly, I didn't even care about it. It was so just blah. It's Yujiro against Okada. Um, in the, the, you know, right before the two main event spots, and, oh, no one cares about Yujiro. Tomatonga and Ghetto had some fun stuff in here, but it was just, it felt so generic, and it just, yeah, everybody going through the motions. Really, just don't waste your time, honestly. I, I'm not, I'm not going through this, because it's just, don't waste your time. It's dumb. So, moving on to the G1 matches. Uh, Cody Ibushi, who's on six points against Badak Fale, against eight points. If Ibushi loses, he is eliminated from contention. So, pretty much we have Fale just beating up Ibushi here, similar to the match with Gallows, where there's a lot of brawling on the outside. Uh, Fale drops the barricade on Ibushi even. Um, you know, he takes Ibushi down. Ibushi tries to come back with a moonsault to the outside, a corkscrew moonsault, another moonsault. He he actually doesn't even get to hit the springboard moonsault to the outside because Fale stops him. Uh, you know, he Fale basically didn't let Ibushi have room to breathe, let, let him have room to be able to get some of these high-flying moves off, of, off and credit to Fale. You know, uh, Fale gets a near fall with a grenade. At one point... Uh, Ibushi tried to counter with the Hurricane Rana into a pin, but Fale uh, blocked it and then did the bad luck fall where he really just dropped Ibushi right on his neck. It looked really bad. And bad luck Fale wins. Ibushi sold everything for Fale here. It's a pretty, it's a good match. I mean, more like decent match. It's not anything, again, you need to go see. Um, but Bad Luck Fale wins, continuing, he gets, uh, now he has 10 points, uh, he continues in the top tier, Ibushi is eliminated from contention now, so all the people that thought Ibushi was going to do something here, sorry to say, but he's done, and I know people are going to be upset and everything, but I can't blame Ghetto until the guy 100% commits to New Japan and stops doing DDT, you can't give him big opportunities like that because you don't know what he's going to do with them. Is he really going to cherish them and, and go after it? Is he going to just keep going back to DDT like it's no big deal? So that, that's, you know, that I've got to understand him and I've got to also understand, you know, why I think Michael Elgin's getting a little bit of a, you know, some extra points here that he probably wouldn't have gotten. And, you know, also why we'll see later with Shibata. Well, until Shibata really commits to, New Japan and stuff's doing the MMA stuff and, and other things. You know, they're, they're, he's not going to get the full full push, you know. So, anyway, moving along, we get to see Naito against Toru Yano. This was the perfect match for Naito. Because, basically, Yano would just copy everything Naito was doing. Uh, you know, it's basically two heels going out of here. So, you know, Yano's your comedy character. Uh, Naito... Uh, Took forever to come to the ring. He took forever to take his suit off. So Yano's like, okay, I'll put my robe back on. I'll just wrestle like this. You know, it's fine. So then Naito beat him up. Um, then he just takes off his suit finally. Uh, he doesn't go for a tope because he wants to take a nap. And the, the crowd just boos and hates it. Uh, he, he beats up the referee, I don't know how many times, again, Lord, they make the referees look so stupid in New Japan, which is so weird for something that's trying to be... It tries to pass off as a real sport, but then you have referees get beat up. At least WWE, you know, finds the guys kayfabe. I mean, like, why Why is there no punishment for these attacking referees? It's just, in a real sport, you wouldn't wrestle the next night. I mean, that makes no sense. You're trying to make this tournament seem legit, and then the referees are just getting blasted all the time. Doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, uh, I like I like that Naito actually had sort of looks like he seems to have watched the previous match with Shibata and was trying to make sure that Yano didn't get to have any room to pull anything over him. Um, Yano got some roll-ups. I think there was... I can't remember. Yano did do a big move, and now I can't remember exactly what it was, but... Either way, Naito, uh, uh, Yano starts blabbing the referee, 
And so Naito takes that opportunity to low blow him with a kick. And then does the Sino for the win. Uh, the sub, it you know there's some funny stuff if you like Gano Masters you go ahead and watch it it's again not anything you need to go out of your way to watch really something you should watch because it shows Tenzog can still have good matches with uh, the right people so your NWA world champion Hiroshi Tenzon against AJ Styles who has eight points uh, Tenzon has two he's been done eliminated. Uh, Yano has also been done, eliminated. So Naito now has 10 points as well. He's still in the running as we move on to the next set of block matches. AJ, Ibushi, and Tanahashi. I mean, you know, I think we should give credit that AJ, Ibushi, and Tanahashi have really made made it to where they really wanted to be the workers of this block. You know, we saw Ibushi solo over the arena for Fale. And AJ worked a really smart match with Tenzon here. He was accentuating his strengths, not trying to make him look weak, trying to make him look equal. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this because it was a match where you didn't have AJ doing a bunch of flashy stuff. He tried to do the flashy stuff and he got countered. He didn't even try to do the Silas Clash once, you know, because he knew he wasn't going to be able to do it on Tenzo and he could have killed him. So, I mean, just, just let's not even bother it. So what AJ does, he works on the leg. Um, he puts him in a leg lock, a figure four. Um, then Tenzon gets to have comebacks here and there. You know, uh, he uh, AJ gets pissed and does Mongolians to Tenzon, so Tenzon counters with Mongolians. He does a suplex, gets a two count. AJ stops the momentum again with an enziguri, does a springboard forearm. Tenzon comes back with a back body drop and like that over the shoulder slam that he does. Uh, AJ won't let him get the Anaconda Vice in, so he hits him with a drop kick. And they just kind of went back and forth there, countering the big moves. And, uh, you know, Tenzon tried to do the diving headbutt, so so AJ kicked him off. And then he went for the moonsault into the DDT, but Tenzon put the... He actually crotched AJ because he puts his knees up and AJ lands crotch first on the knees. It's funny. Um, AJ's face during that is great. Uh, AJ also telling the crowd to shut up multiple times while they chant for Tenzon is great. Like him doing commentary during his match makes it even better. Uh, he gets the Anaconda Vice here, does Tenzon. Uh, AJ gets up and blocks the Anaconda Buster because AJ gets the ropes. Tenzon starts kind of talking to the referee here, gets distracted, and AJ is able to get the calf killer. The second time he's done the calf killer in this match, as the first time was really awkward, but he got it in there. And then we get the tap out from Tenzon. Uh, I really love the psychology here. I love that both of them went at it. Tenzo looked really good here. And it's something, it's the second best match on the show. The only other match on the show you really need to pay attention to. I mean, you don't have to watch it. Tenzon's eliminated. You kind of knew AJ was going to win. But if you're 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 one of those that's totally sold on Tenzo, I can never have a good match. I think AJ really, really pulled one out here on Tenzon. So we go from that to... Your never open way champion Togi uh, Makabe to and Doc Gallows. Oh, this is so so lazy. It was a bunch of brawling outside. I mean, like constant brawling outside. Uh, Gallows tried to do everything he could. He choked Makabe with his own chain. He punched him with the chain. He grabbed the Gallows rope and choked him. He uh, j- he we, they bowed up to the ramp. Uh, they they went over to the crowd and uh, Gallows threw the barricade at Makabe. Mac- Mac- I mean, just just uh, come on, like just total. I mean, I get it. Do what you know how to do and do go within your limits. But it's just, uh, I was so done with this by the time we got there. Uh, rest hold by Gallows as soon as they get back in the ring. Makabe makes a short comeback with lariats, his ten punches. Uh, Gallus would kick Maccabi off the top rope as he tries to, he would actually kick him twice as he tries to get him off the top to not do the King Kong knee drop. We'd hit the, he'd hit the Gallus pole, um, Maccabi kicked out, uh, he gets the Lariat, the Death Valley Driver, and the King Kong knee drop all in one go, and Gallus is done. Uh, Gallus actually also made a reference to CM Punk at the beginning when they zoomed in on him and let him talk. Dude, just, you know what, how about I actually care about the matches you're in instead of sitting there name-dropping Phil Brooks? Oh, whoa, ho, ho, I said Phil Brooks on the New Japan show. All the all the guys creamed themselves. 
Like, come on, man. Just just shut up and actually care about the job you're doing there. You know, like Michael Hogan. Anyway, so we get done with that. And we, we move on to a much better match, a much more enjoyable match. The best match of the night. One of the best of the whole tournament. Hiroshi Tanahashi, 8 points. Katsuri Shibata, 8 points. Basically, this decides if Shibata... Whoever loses here, they're done. So... You know what, to be honest, this wasn't, you know, I think the people that are really upset that there wasn't any, like, big flashy moves and great, like, just awesome counters and, you know, what you got in the Ibushi Shibata, there was none of that here. This was wrestling. Wrestling for 21 minutes. I mean, you talk about, this is almost like an old school wrestling match. Just these guys exchanging holds on the mat first. And this just going through and exchanging things, basic things you see at the beginning of matches, but they just did it. And it was interesting. It never made me... I'm watching this at... What is it? it live at this point. I had been up since 5 a.m. They usually end these things at 8.30. So like around 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time, I'm watching this. I am never looking away because it's still interesting even though there's exchanging holds then they exchange like leg moves and you see uh shibata put a, a tanahashi into a leg lock uh the the, the uh a leg hole or an indian death lock then tanahashi counters into a leg hold uh shibata and tanahashi have this little dance that they do with uh shibata trying to put tanahashi to abdominal stretch he does but tanahashi hips hip tosses out of there shibata gets the figure four in as my dog just figures out he can't shut up and he uh so then we get um after this you you see uh tanahashi gets the ropes so now Shibata gets done with that, and he starts trying to wear down Tanahashi so he can do the basement drop kick. Well, Tanahashi moves, does a drop kick to the leg, then he dragon screws that leg. Uh, they go to the outside. Tanahashi beats down Shibata on the outside and drop kicks him into the barricade. An ultimate, like, I'm better than you moment. Like, take that, Shibata. You tried to basement drop kick me. I got it to you. First, Shibata would actually get back in the ring and basement drop kick Tanahashi and get the neck lock suplex for two. But I, I think the little seed had already been planted in Tanahashi's head there. Or not in Tanahashi's head, in Shibata's head. Shibata gets the abdominal st- stretch. Learns from the first time. Great binds the leg over Tanahashi's face so he can't get out. Eventually, Shibata just let go. Both men go down as they're exhausted here. They get up exchanging blows and even get uppercuts in. This was insane. They really went at it for with the blows for a while. Uh, Shibata goes for the surprise final kick. Tana blocks it, grabs the leg. Um, and then Dragon screws it, and the both guys fall down out of their, just the legs not being able to take the pressure of being up anymore. This was just great. I mean, in a lot of matches, you'll see someone do something crazy, like an insecurity or whatever, to keep the other guy out. They both just fall down because they know both legs have been worked on and they can't go anymore. Like, it's just, just great stuff. Tanahashi gets a cloverleaf in here to further go on Shibata's legs. Tanahashi hits a screwdriver, goes up top of Shibata, kicks him twice, and then throws Tanahashi off the top rope. Tanahashi gets a sing, desperation sing blade. And then you get Shibata hitting a desperation AA. And they both stay down after this. So it's not like, you know, they do this and keep going. They, they stay down because they're exhausted. These are like the real desperation moves. Uh, Shibata goes for another AA, but Tana, Tanahashi gets a swing neck breaker. He hits a high fly flow standing. He goes for the number one. Shibata gets his knees up and then puts in the sleeper immediately. So you, you've already got the crowd going here. It's it's at a fever pitch at this point. Shibata kicks Lariat to the back, a jumping kick. Then he still can't get the penalty kick. Tanahashi ducks, goes for a jerk, but Shibata tries to run into the ropes. Shibata, or Tanahashi does that thing where you push him into the ropes and then you roll him back. Well, he tries to do the bridge and Tanahashi can't, his back gives out on him and his legs can't hold the bridge either. So they have to go for another. So there's a little bit of a botch finish, but it's fine because they, they fix it. Tanahashi gets another roll up with Shibata's shoulders into the mat. And then Tanahashi pins Shibata with that move, almost like a backslide. And that's it. You win. There's no, like, he didn't have to go hit 20 high five flows. He didn't have to block the penalty kick 30 million times. 
Could it have gone a little longer? Sure. Could it have been like more crazy or whatever at the end? Sure. But this was perfect the way it was. It just a wonderful match that you need to go go check out right now. Just a wonderful match. If you don't like wrestling, if you you're one of those that loves flippies and and you want stuff going on and, and whatever constantly, this has constant action. But it's not that like constant action of just blows and moves and whatever. Just this was really, really good. And uh, you know, a great match. Go watch this. You will enjoy it. I I can't tell you enough. Just go watch it. Um and if you don't like it, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. So final standings to two Naito, Hiroshi Tanahashi, AJ Styles and Bad Luck Fale. Ten points now. So Shibata and Makabe are stuck on eight points. Ibushi stuck on six. And then you got Yano on four, Tenzin and Gawas at two. So Okada going in to the uh, next night here on Sunday uh, has ten points. He's all alone by himself. Ishii, Goto, Anderson, and Shinsuke Nakamura and Michael Elgin all have eight points. Kojima and Takahashi have four. Nagata has two. And Hama has zero. This was a one-match show. It was a one-match show with a... Good match from Tenzon and AJ that maybe you want to go check out, maybe you don't. The next night here should be pretty interesting. You have some pretty nice uh, Block B matchups for Sunday. Let's go over the card. I know I forgot to do this on the previous night, so I apologize. Jay White and David Finley against Tamatanga Bad Luck Fale. As uh, Bad Luck Fale is going to wrestle AJ. On Tuesday, so that's why he doesn't have a confrontation here. Masuka Dorada and Kota Ibushi against Yoshihashi and Toru Yano. It'll be Ibushi against Yano for that one. Uh, Captain New Japan, Ryusuke Taguchi, Tetsuya Naito against Cody Hall, Doc Gallows, and AJ Styles. It'll be um, Naito against Gallows. And I, as I mentioned, AJ's wrestling uh, Bad Luck Fale there. So Kushida... Hiro- Hiroshi Tenzan and Hiroshi Tanahashi against Tiger Mask, Katsuri Shibata, and Togi Makabe. It's Tenzan against Shibata, Tanahashi against Makabe. That's your main event. Should be pretty interesting. Um, I, you know, the, the those two matches, you know, Tanahashi Makabe actually could be pretty good. I don't know about anything else. Styles will probably get a good match out of Fale, but I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. And Shibata could have a good match with, uh, with Tenzan there, so... But yeah, let's go on to those Block B matches that are going to happen tomorrow. Michael Elgin is Carl Anderson. I already told you this could be really good. Kojima and Nagata at a battle of veterans that are already eliminated. Should be pretty fun. Uh, Okada against Yujiro. I could see a lot of walking through the motions here, and I don't blame Okada at all because nobody cares. Okada just needs to get that win. Tomaki Hama against Shinsuke Nakamura should be pretty good. Uh, I'm excited for that one. You got Hiroki Goto uh, against Tomohiro Ishii. Should be interesting to see if Ishii wins and maybe you have another IC title uh, matchup set as Anderson's already beat Goto once in this tournament. So, yeah, should be interesting to see if, if Ishii gets that win here against Goto. So, that's your first Kirk and Hall show on Sunday. And then they'll have two more Kirk and Hall shows on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then they have the final three in Sumo Hall. Of course, again, we'll have a review of that final on, on Sunday night, uh, going into Monday morning, and then we'll be done with the G1 Climax. I'll have a written review. I'll, I'll probably also give out like some of my favorite matches of the whole tournament and some of the ratings for the wrestlers. I'm going to have a whole written like post-G1 uh, article where I talk about ratings for all the wrestlers, kind of like you, do, you see in the soccer games, soccer matches, and then... Uh, also, my top 10 favorite matches of the tournament. So, All right. Well, until tomorrow sometime, uh, we're done here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow for the first show in Tokyo, Kurikan Hall.